Hello and welcome to SoccerCoachingBlog.com, our second episode, episode 1876. First of all, I want to thank everybody that stopped by the Soccer Blog last week, uh, over the last week or so, and watched the show. Thank you for all the people who left comments on the show, um, on the blog itself, or on our Facebook fan page, which is SoccerCoachingBlog.com, and also who uh, followed us on Twitter, at Twitter dot com slash soccer soccer coach block um, so thanks for everyone who stopped by left the comments became fans on our fan page and spread the word using the social network buttons above us uh, facebook twitter and email um, first of all let's get into the question of the day last week and uh, i want to congratulate wes who successfully answered the question which was what is significant to me about the number or the year 1875 and of course it's the year that Blackburn Rovers were formed uh, that's my hometown club that's where I was born and bred in Blackburn Lancashire in England uh, so 1875 is a, a special number for me that's why we numbered our first show 1875 and I recently found out that not only was the club formed uh, in 1875 but actually on December 18th, which is my mum's birthday, so that's pretty cool. So well done Wes on answering that question, uh, which leads us to our next question, the question of the day for this episode. And I have here two kind of technology here. I have the latest iPad and I have uh, the actual game ball, the match ball as it's called, that was used in the 1924 FA Cup final at Wembley Stadium. You can see the ball have the old laces in with the bladder inside. Uh, if the ball popped, they'd take the pig's bladder out, put a new one in and, and lace it back up. Um, it's not pumped up, of course, right now, but a very heavy ball when it got wet would really be almost like a medicine ball. And can you imagine heading the ball and hitting those laces? That would be pretty painful. So the question of the day is, this ball was used, 1924 FA Cup final in London at Wembley Stadium. Which teams were in the FA Cup final what was the score and uh, as many details as possible about the game. So that's the question of the day. I wanted to review the comments uh, that we got regarding last week's show. Um, I went through the drill, here it is again, the famous drill, uh, a very simple basic drill for uh, shooting. And uh, one of the comments we received was, thanks for pointing out those uh, points that I, I kind of don't emphasize enough or hadn't known some of those points. So that was a good positive response. And equally, we had a response that said uh, it was too complicated, almost like a lecture, um, and was just too, too much covered. Now, the idea is when, we're, when I'm going through the philosophy of coaching with belief here at soccercoachingblog.com, is not to make things complicated and complex, quite the opposite. Uh, I'm sure you spent time on the internet or looking at coaching books or videos looking for new drills or new things you can teach. And whenever I go on websites, and a lot of them, there's been a lot of time and effort putting these websites together, um, but it just looks too complicated for me. I, I go onto the website and I'm like, where do I start? Which drill should I use? And X to Y to B to, it just, to me, it's way too complicated. What we're trying to do here is to, is to boil it down to the basics, uh, maybe come up with five or six drills that you can use uh, for the rest of the season. I don't think our job as coaches is to entertain our players by coming up with a new, latest, craziest drill you can find each practice each week. I don't think that's our job. Our job is to help the players get better, and I think the players respect some consistency and also respect learning at each practice as opposed to just being entertained by the latest drill. The way I would use the drill we talked about last week is, of course, I wouldn't expect you to go through every single point the first time you showed this to your players. Typically what I think would happen is you set up the drill, B passes to A, A lays it off, B runs on, shoots, and A comes and follows up. That's the mechanics of the drill. Have the players go through it a couple of times to get used to the mechanics and let you assess as their coach where you need to start, what you need to work on. The first points we have are the player A checking away and creating some space and then communicating between A and B what A wants from the, from the pass. 
that could be enough for your first session. Working on the creating of space, checking away, getting A and B to talk, that could be all you need to do that first session. The next session, introduce a drill again, have them go through the mechanics, and then recap, checking, creating space, communicating, and make sure they've learned that. Then you can add the next point, and it's the quality and the type of pass from B to A. Now, if you think about it, a player asking for the ball, creating space for himself, that's not just used in this drill, that's used all through the game, all parts of the field. So if you're helping A, the player in that position, master that and get those habits uh, into his game, he's going to use it in every other drill and every other game from then onwards. So these aren't things to take lightly. This is a really good, simple drill to help you work on the basics and go at the speed and the progression of your team. If they get the first three or four points straight away, brilliant, wonderful, well done, makes your life easier. Work on the next point, work on the next point. But I want to put across to our, our soccer community here, we want to keep it simple, but we're not here to coach soccer by just running drills. I want to be able to show you the key factors in the drill uh, so that you can then use them in your coaching career. Okay? Right, so we had a question on our blog from Wes, and his question was, um, would you require high school players to wear shin guards for their entire practice? I have been getting a lot of resistance to this. That's a great question, and I'm sure every coach out there has, has pondered that. My answer is very simple. Mandatory wearing of shin guards at practice. A uh, number of reasons why. First of all, our philosophy, as you know here at Soccer Coaching Blog, is we want to make practice and drills within practice as game-like as possible. And within practice, the practice itself, we want the players to be going at certain points at game speed and game intensity. You can't have your players holding back in practice and then when it comes to a game at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, all of a sudden stepping up a gear. You need them to be working hard in practice as if it's a real game. And by wearing their shin guards, that'll help them go for it more as opposed to hold back wondering if they're worried about getting hurt. Obviously by wearing shin guards at practice, you do reduce the number of injuries. So that's another reason why you should wear shin guards. And especially the younger players, have them wearing the shin guards at practice. So when it comes to the game itself, it's not something that's weird or uncomfortable. They've been wearing them for three hours that week at two practices anyway. I can't see any benefit whatsoever for not wearing shin guards at practice. So as the coach, put your foot down, mandatory use of shin guards at practice, okay? I hope that helps, Wes. The next thing is I do spend some time during the week on forums, uh, soccer coaching forums all over the internet, all over the world. We had a great question the other day that I, that I answered for my, you know, gave my opinion, and that is the um, question of how do you choose a captain? There was a high school coach, girls coach, uh, was wondering how to choose a captain for the next season, the upcoming season. Um, again, my view is, and for whatever it's worth, you know, let's let's have opposing views as well, opposite views. Um, I believe there should be one captain on the team, one captain. End of story. No questions asked. Captain on the field and off the field. Um, the college team I just coached the last four years, the players themselves voted for a captain and they chose a sophomore, which for the non-American uh, people in our uh, audience here is a player who's in his second year of a four-year school. Uh, he was chosen as a sophomore, a second year, as opposed to waiting for a senior to come along. He was the captain for a second year, third year, fourth year on the team. The players respected him because they chose him. He was a great captain, and I still have the authority to change the captain if necessary but he did a fantastic job both on and off the field. Um, if you get involved in committees and selection and leadership training and all that, that's nice, but I think it can dilute the eventual captain that's chosen and it gets too many opinions, too many people deciding who's the captain um, and it can just make things a little bit weaker if that's the term. I think the players prefer one captain that they can turn to, they get to know his habits, his standards or her habits, her standards, and it makes life simpler for everybody, cleaner and, and more professional. So that's my view on captains. One captain chosen by the team, the coach has the opportunity to change that captain. 
Okay, moving on. I don't know whether you saw the game last night, Blackpool versus uh, Tottenham Hotspur. Fantastic performance and fantastic result from Blackpool. Uh, and what a breath of fresh air they are in the Premier League. Uh, my parents, my mum and dad actually live in Blackpool. And um, a great story. I went there two or three years ago with my dad to watch a game. They've recently been bought by a Latvian businessman who said he was going to take them from where they were into the Premier League. And we all pretty much laughed. It was like, are you kidding me? Uh, he paraded his family and business associates on the field at halftime wearing the orange and white scarf. At the time, the stadium only had two sides to it. It wasn't even a complete stadium. And we were all looking at each other thinking, this guy's nuts. There's no way this team's going to get in the Premier League. But all credit to them, Ian Holloway, especially the coach, uh, done a fantastic job. Um, beginning of the season, I picked Blackpool, Wigan and Wolves to be relegated. Hopefully I got it wrong with Blackpool especially, because uh, it's great to hear they're on a fixed wage, they wash their own kit, and uh, they're beating Spurs and, and, and big clubs in the Premier League. So well done to Blackpool, it's a great motivation and inspiration to all of us. Um, Okay, what we're going to do next week on the coaching blog, we're going to have a, a guest on the show. You're going to love this guy, he's a real character. I work with him during the day, he plays soccer locally. He can describe himself as, this week he described himself as Totti from AS Roma, a goal he scored. It was just like Totti scores. So we're going to have Derek on the show next week, great guy, you're going to have a lot of fun with him. We're going to analyse a game on Sunday, it's going to be the Carling Cup final between Arsenal and Birmingham City. Uh, big game, big event. So we're going to analyse that again, not as if we were Fox Soccer Channel and uh, Jeremy St. Louis and Eamon O'Callan or whatever he's called. Uh, it's going to be Derek and I analyse the game for coaching moments where we can point out some things that you may be able to then learn from and use at your next practice. Um, so that's the idea. So if you get a chance, please watch the game yourself and uh, come up with some things that you want to talk about. Drop a line on the blog and ask me a question and we'll make sure we cover that in the, uh, the next show. All right, so we've covered the question of the day. Remember 1924, we've answered the question regarding shin guards. We've answered the question regarding captain, how to choose a captain. Please leave us a, uh, some comments on the blog. Leave us a couple of questions so we can address them next week. Remember the buttons above, Facebook, Twitter, and email. Please spread, spread the word. The bigger we can make this community, the better for all of us. And on the left, your, left, your right-hand side here, you can input your name and email address, and we'll send you a free report on how to run a soccer practice. So something I wrote last year. By submitting your email and name, it's, it's private, we're not going to sell your name, we're not going to distribute your name anywhere else. It's just a way of you uh, asking for the report and you can download it immediately and uh, run through that. Again, get a highlighter, make some notes, give me some feedback on what you learned from the report and what else you would include in the report. So thanks again for stopping by the Soccer Coaching blog. Uh, we're excited to have uh, two shows in now. We want to keep doing this every week. We want to build this community. Please spread the word. Ask us questions. Give us some feedback. And let's talk soccer. <laughs>